guys, they don't give autonomy to their, um, their studios, they kind of influence the headrest. Was this actually used as a headrest? Or was it part it of a large kind of like a sanitary towel set. to me, it just made of metal. Well, anyway, Square do tend to not interfere as such, but have an active part in the uh, the development process so it shows there are a lot of japanese-esque things in this there are a lot of japanese influences in here and i don't just mean from the fact that it's like japanese island and all that that was probably a western idea they probably thought you know wait great we're working with japanese studio now we can get more accurate information we can have a more accurate representation of japanese culture and stuff great i, I like that it's great oh i remember this Hmm. Singed around the There's edges. Um, a collection of them, I think there's three different items. Owner? There's a name on the tag. Now this actually was really? really good. Talking about, you know, symbolism and stuff. This collection of items here, there's three I think. There was the bat, there's a, a ratter type toy, I think. One of those little, um, it's like a drum thing, it has two bars on it, I think. And then there's a article of clothing or something. Now that was a great piece of symbolism. It drove the point home very succinctly without being heavy handed. It's basically it's just showing you that it's not just soldiers and adventurers that have crashed here. There was a young girl. There were families that have been affected by this as well. You know, just regular everyday families. I mean, obviously, every, regular everyday families are still part of you know, military life. Just because you're in the military doesn't mean your entire family is. Like, I've spent time in the military, but... Well, okay, a fair few of my family members have. But by a fair few, I mean two uncles, grandfather, and a cousin. Um, as far as I know, none of the rest of them... Wait, one of my... Oh, no, another cousin went in as well. Yeah, I think. I don't know, but anyway, just because... A few members of the family have doesn't mean that the, ma the majority of us on my father's side were bricklayers, you know, construction workers. On my mother's side, very diverse group of people. One of them ran chip shops. One of them was an accountant. Uh, one of them was no, there were two uncles in the military actually. Oh, one. So yeah, I've had quite a fair few. But anyway, my point is just. Uh, Regular families, in the sense of you know, completely non-military ass, no, like, no, not mercenaries or adventurers or anything like that. Just regular people, regular jobs, uh, work down the local pub or stuff like that. And I thought that was a really powerful, um, really powerful thing to realise. That was handled extremely well. Oh, more boat pass, awesome. So what they say? What's going on up there? God. Who the hell is she? I don't know. I think she killed that new guy now. What? She killed one of the Russians. Dimitri! He did not get in the window! Has anyone told Boris? He's running over the salvage top on that ship she came in on. I don't think he knows what's going on. He finds out his brothers are dead. Yeah. I ain't on that crew. That's stuff I like as well, the random conversations, the fact that they don't force you into them. Nice choice. Uh, I get the feeling that was more of a Western influence though. So I've noticed Japanese stuff, they tend to be very focused and they want to make sure that you see it. I get that. Um, was, we were talking about this in a recent Pixel Judge podcast actually. The way games work. Um, we, we tend to look at linearity in games these days as being a very, very bad thing. Because we've gotten so used to so many open world games, it, it depends what you're going in for. Open world games are fantastic for a, for a game, you know, for gameplay, for a focus on having fun with the game, having a great experience with a drop in, drop out um, missions and stories, like Grand Theft Auto for example. But you, you end up with this disconnect, especially with, when they try and be really serious, which is what happened with Grand Theft Auto 4. It wasn't that Grand Theft Auto 4 had a bad story, it was actually really good, it just didn't fit the setting, because on the other hand, you had this game where you could go and um, you could grab a hooker, you could go and 
do stuff with her. You could then run her over, be wanted by the police, and have and slaughter tens of thousands of people in a nightclub just for the lols. And you could get in a um, get in a, a truck and go a, a bus and go and do a, a jump over a, a, a bridge and have the bus flip in midair. And it was just a disconnect between the two because you had the really stupid slapstick insanity on one hand. And then the very grim, very, very serious, not over the top either, very realistic representation of the life of a career criminal, as someone trying to break out from it. So the, the two just didn't mesh. This is why Saints Row tends to work better as a sandbox, because the missions are very stupid and very slapstick as well. So it's consistent, it's a consistent theme. So it's, I'm not saying that you can't have an open world sandbox that is also um, tightly focused on the story. I'm just saying it's a lot more difficult. When you get a linear campaign, you can make sure that everything is consistent throughout. There are always going to be ways to break immersion, like for example, if you, you start your level off and water starts coming in and there's this dude says, come on, we have to get out of here, opens a hatch, climbs up and then you follow up after them. Um, if, you, if you then say, I wonder what happens if I stay here, immersion is gone. You're not immersed in the experience. There are always going to be things like that. So, I mean, if you then stay there and the water doesn't continue to rise, you're like, well, what's all the rush then? You know? Or if it does continue to rise and the character dies, you're like, ah, you know, I don't care. You're not immersed in it because you don't have that sense of urgency to keep the character alive. You're experiencing it. It's fine. I do that with games as well. But, generally speaking, with a linear game like Tomb Raider, I can go off and I can do all the exploration and stuff, but it still feels consistent because it's, generally speaking, it's focusing towards one thing, it's focusing towards continuing the story. Is this another one of the things from the kid? Yeah, it is. Where have all is it the from the same kid gone? or is it from a different child? I think, actually thinking about it, yeah, different children. Another name. Carving More than one child. Coco. I should bloody well cool, cool. I know that's entirely inappropriate, but it just reminded me of um, a web series I used to watch called A Great and Majestic Empire. It's never finished, unfortunately. Uh, I think it has 24 parts, something like that. But yeah, anyway, um, a focus story, a linear story, allows you to do... Okay. That's awesome. I got stuck. Yay! But a linear story allows you to have a lot more focus and allows you to build a narrative that's much more consistent. It also... Oh, well, there she just casually shakes her hands off. But it allows you to... Um, <laughs> it allows you to be, uh, get people invested in what's going on a little bit more than with an open world one, or at least more easily. And one of the ways to do that is to draw people's <laughs> attention to certain things. However, there are means and ways of doing that. I think Tomb Raider had a very good way of doing that. It gave the option of focusing in on it. And there are a lot of games that do that. It's like press this button to walk in the right direction. Or the, but in the real world, people will point and tell you it's like it's over by the, the post box, for example. And then you'd look over by the post box. Um, that's still a linear progression of from point to point. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but then there are other games that do it in the heavy-handed way, and that's where the real problem with a linear game comes in. Like games like Alan Bloody Wakes, like you, every time you go in somewhere, it'll have this, it'll have words that'll pop up on screen telling you about something. Alan will then mention it. The camera will then zoom in on it, and it'll have something else to tell you about it. Again, it's like yes, I get it. I get the point. That is overdoing it, and that's when having a linear focus it becomes detrimental. Um, but my point overall is, you don't have to have a sandbox to have an open game, and you don't have to have a linear game to have a linear experience. It's all about balance between the two. The most important thing is to keep everything consistent. If you're going for a very silly madcap experience overall, then make everything silly and madcap. And when you do have more serious moments, make sure they blend in. Jump to his dead, but you shot him. Details, man. They aren't ever gonna find his They're killing each other. Damn it, brother. 
Oh, Why'd Ron. you have to do that? He wouldn't shut the fuck up. It was driving me crazy. Sun Queen this, Sun Queen that. All that goddamn praying and chanting. I couldn't take it. You could have just knocked him out. I lost what a my nice temper. guy. The place brings it out in me. Isn't he? Yeah, but you gotta control that shit. Such a charming man. Just keep your mouth shut about it, alright? Just the kind of person I want to have fine, around for fine. a party. Seriously. Hmm. Anyway, yes, keep it consistent. That's all I'm saying. Any storytellers or game makers out there, keep it consistent. That doesn't mean it always has to be the same, either. That doesn't mean it always has to be serious or it always has to be silly. You can blend the two together. You can have scenes that are very serious and still comedic. There's um, an Asian film I saw actually called Halhonaho. Absolutely fantastic film. But there's a scene in that where a kid's just been slapped. It's slapped around the face and then the family are upstairs, the mother, son and daughter and they're crying because the um, uh, because the grandmother just slapped the youngest girl, the, the, the youngest child, the girl. And um, the, the child's crying and saying she hates me, doesn't she? And the little boy is also crying and, say, we'll say uh, and says no, Jump points at the mother and says she hates you. And it's it's hilarious. Detail. It sounds really horrible to say that, but the way it was handled, it was done in a comedic sense. But it was still very serious at the same time. And that's a good disconnect. It's one of those things that you really shouldn't laugh at, but it's more. that was more of a... Um, more of a social commentary than it was more of a reflection of the way life is and sometimes like they say laughter is the best medicine sometimes you just have to laugh at things graveyard humor the classic example of that quite common with people who have military lifestyles actually um, one of the corporals told me a story i might have mentioned this before but i'm, I'm going about it again. i'm going to say it again anyway but there was um one of the the guys he was with, they were, uh, they'd were they been there for years, he was an experienced soldier and they went to this place um, somewhere, uh, they went to this village and they'd hold up in the town hall and they'd set up tents inside the hall for some bizarre reason and the city came under mortar fire or the, the general area came under mortar fire and one of the guys there, an experienced soldier, I mean not like a career soldier, he's not like really experience he's not been there for decades or anything but he wasn't he wasn't new to it he'd been in combat situations before he'd been in stuff like that and um that he just sort of disappeared and eventually the corporal found him and he was, he was down in a car huddled up into a ball with his hands over his head shaking like what they're the guessing what's wrong and he said, they're, they're trying to get me they're all trying to get me they 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 know i'm here they're trying to get me that kind of thing and what can you do in a situation like that? The guy was actually terrified. He'd just broken. Something about that had just set him off. Maybe a maybe a one um, a, a martyr a bit too close by. Maybe it was just one time too many. Maybe he was just having a bad day. Maybe he had a bad dream. But he he was there and he, and he was he he genuinely believed that the martyr fire was coming down so it would to kill him. So the corporal did the sensible thing. I said, don't be fucking stupid. If they're trying to get you, they have to, they'd have be um, aiming closer. They have terrible aim. And they, they laughed about it, and he picked himself back up, and he went, oh, and it sounds... It's like, how could you be so heartless about something like that? The guy was mortified. The guy was terrified. But under the circumstances, it was the best thing to do, because he needed to break out of that mindset. Graveyard humour. 